Hi, my name is Dylan Hong, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Oculus Rift. Right now, it's $400, and this is by far the cheapest way that we've seen for people to get into the space of VR, and I mean full VR, using a full computer, a, a gaming computer that has a beefed up graphics processor and a CPU, and not any of that little cardboard, Google Cardboard, or Samsung Gear VR stuff. This is the real deal, and it's $400. So at this $400 price range, my question today is, is it worth it? Because before, I would almost just instantly say, no, I'm not gonna spend $800 on top of my $1,000 plus gaming PC to get VR. But now that it's, you know, within the price range that I'm okay with, I wanna see, is it worth it? To jump right into things really quickly, I want to take a look at the unboxing process. And while I don't want to spend too much time on this, I do have to say that this is extremely polished. Facebook and Oculus did a really good job with making this seem like a completely consumer-ready, consumer-facing VR system for the masses. The big hefty box and slide-out compartments and just the way they manage the cables and insertion of the, of the touch controllers and the sensors is all fantastic. And everything inside of it too just feels like quality. And I am going to bring up the HTC Vive a little bit too because I actually work with both the HTC Vive and the Oculus Rift on a regular basis at my job and I think that I have a pretty good sense of both of them in general. I do think that the Oculus as a consumer facing product is a little bit more polished in most aspects than the HTC Vive and it does show in the unboxing experience as the HTC Vive's unboxing experience is a little less glamorous. So what you get in the box is one headset two sensors, two touch controllers, and an Xbox controller. So this Xbox controller is going to be in here for the rest of the summer, but as the sale ends, they're actually going to bump it up to a $500 price and get rid of the Xbox controller to save on cost. Now that the touch controllers are standard. When we take a closer look at the build quality of all of the hardware, once again, it's really, really good. The headset is clean and crisp, and it just, it looks decent. You know, you're still holding a box on top of your face, and there's no getting around that, but for what it is, it looks really sleek. And the touch controllers are also really well built. They're extremely ergonomic, they fit in your hands, and you kind of just know how you're supposed to hold them when they're in your hands. There's a right and left one, so it just, it really works. This comparing to the HTC Vive, their, their touch controllers are not very ergonomic. They're fantastic, their tracking is awesome, and they work really well, but it does take a little bit more time to get used to the HTC Vive's touch controllers than the Oculus Rift's. And that's because the Oculus Rift's touch controllers took forever to get onto the market. They've, they were a solid like six or eight months after the Vive came out with theirs. And once again, all of the sensors, headset, and touch controllers follow a similar design language that just, it, it looks really good and I'm okay with leaving things out. And right now you can actually see my two sensors right there. They don't take up too much space, but they're, they're really, they're not an eyesore at all. And as a last note, to touch on build quality and just sort of what they included with the hardware, all of the build is really fantastic. It's all very solid plastic. It's not heavy, It's but it's light enough to feel sturdy. It's, it's really good. The headset is more comfortable than the HTC Vibes in my opinion, and there's actually a little less space for people with glasses. So if you do wear glasses, you might wanna look into the HTC Vive a little bit more because the Oculus is a little closer to your face, but it is lighter and it is sleeker and I think it runs a little bit cooler. Fitting the straps onto your head now, it's, it's very comfortable. It's a little spring-loaded, so you just kind of whip it on the back of your head and then drag it over to the front of your eyes and then just shift it around a little bit to adjust for focus. So from an unboxing and hardware setup, I think the Oculus Rift does a fantastic job and it, it all looks really good and it all seems to be built really well. So now that I've unboxed it, I do want to talk a little bit about the specs of the Oculus Rift. And so I have them actually pulled up on my phone right here because I don't want to mess anything up, but I do want to note that basically all of the specs that you hear right now aren't going to be extremely translatable to something that you're actually used to unless you've used VR before. And specs and whatever I say, as much as I say that it's immersive and cool and awesome, you really aren't going to completely get a full grasp of what I'm saying until you use it. So I highly suggest if your friend has it, try to take the chance to use it or go out to Old Best Buy or a Microsoft store and just use VR for the first time because that that's when it really is awesome. I've let a bunch of people try my system and most the, the most common thing that people said was it was way more immersive than they expected. So the Oculus Rift has an OLED display of 2160 by 1200 and this runs at a refresh rate of 90 hertz. Basically what that means is it'll react well enough to your face moving around for you to not really notice, and it's 
got a decent resolution so all VR right now is is pretty pixelated so it if you're thinking about it in terms of like TV it's a little bit more of you know from 1080p to 4k in just the screens being right next to your eyes there's no getting around that you are gonna have a pixelated experience I think it's a little bit better on the oculus rift because reading text is a bit easier but in general it doesn't remove the immersiveness of VR at least to me the field of view is 110 degrees and this means that there are gonna be black bars or just parts that aren't screen when you're in VR and at first this is pretty noticeable you do see that you know you're looking through sort of like binoculars in a sense um, you're not seeing naturally what you normally see which is just straight up vision and while this is a barrier right now for VR I do think that it doesn't detract from the quality of the immersive experiences at all and it's just once again something you have to try for yourself and see if it bothers you on the headset there's built-in audio and mic so one great thing about the Oculus Rift is it actually includes these headphone sort of things. They're on ear, they rest over, they're very comfortable actually. And they're just, they're decent headphones that are built into the system. And comparing this to the HTC Vive, normally you have to bring your own headphones and that's just another thing to worry about in terms of plugging in, but also in terms of cable management. You know, it, with the HTC Vive, you have, you know, your HDMI, your USB, and your audio. And for this, it's all bundled into one cord and then you end up plugging in the HDMI and USB separately because it splits at the end of the Oculus Rift. But it's very clean. It's Once again, it's a very consumer facing setup. So one thing that people do generally tend to look over is the cost of the actual computer itself. Because if you don't have a computer already that can run a virtual reality system, you're gonna have to spend around a thousand dollars to get one running. On the Oculus side of things, they recommend an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 960 or above or an AMD Radeon RX 470 or above. If your CPU is is a higher end CPU from the past few years, it should be good. But in terms of graphics card, you're really gonna want to be in the more 10 series NVIDIA graphics cards that got released last summer. So that's probably gonna be your main barrier to entry in terms of what your computer can handle with VR. So once again, with everything that I said about tech specs, it really comes down to how much you enjoy using the system and how immersed you can get because I, while these specs are numbers and whatever, they don't at all convey the experience of being in a virtual environment through virtual reality systems. And that is something that you just have to try because it's fantastic. So now I actually want to talk about the setup process. And once again, with the Oculus Rift, it seems like it's, it's pretty robust. I mean, there are a few things that are a little bit annoying. So Basically, the way the system works is you plug in the two sensors through USB, you can use USB 3.0 or 2.0, and then you plug in the headset through both HDMI and USB. Make sure that you plug in the headset directly into the graphics card, and then also that you have a graphics card that has either dual HDMIs out or you have a display port out for your monitor, because you will need both the monitor to be plugged into your graphics card as well as the headset to be plugged into your graphics card. I do think that the setup process is very similar to something like setting up a Wii. It's, you know, it's just a regular console and on the Oculus side of things, it's pretty robust. There are a few annoying things with setting up the sensors that it's not always as proactive in telling you how it wants it to be, but I think if you're interested in this space at all or computers or virtual reality, you're probably going to be well equipped enough to set up the virtual reality system and I don't think it's going to deter anybody at all. The HTC Vive setup is a little bit more complicated, but that's actually because it has a very, very robust, complicated lighthouse tracking system. So my next thing that I really wanted to talk about is tracking. And tracking is one of the most important things when it comes to a VR headset and hardware. And this is unfortunately one area where the Oculus Rift is is just not as good as the HTC Vive. In most areas of, of hardware and build, I think the Oculus is just as good, if not better, for the $800 Vive, but tracking is just undeniably so much better on the HTC Vive. The way Oculus does it is it uses two front-facing sensors, and then you get this up to five by 11 play area, but generally it's a little bit smaller than that. And you get kind of this 270 degree area where you can face where the sensors will pick you up and the HTC Vive does this really awesome diagonal box facing lighthouse system where you kind of set up the boundaries of the your area using the two lighthouses that the HTC Vive tracks with and this gives a 
fully immersive 360 degree tracking system that's almost flawless. I mean, I use this all the time and it it just it surprises me how well it works and like I can have my controllers under me and around me and it basically always picks them up. With the Oculus, if I turn around completely, it just it doesn't completely get it. And sometimes there'll be like software glitches in the game where it can't catch my head controller if I turn all the way around. And so that does mean when you're using software and when you're playing games that require you to turn around, if you're playing something that was maybe more built for the Vive, you do have to use software buttons to change your angle in game, which does take a little bit away from the experience in my opinion. However, when you are facing the sensors, the tracking is phenomenal in the Oculus Rift and it works extremely well. It's just that little bit that doesn't completely get it over the edge of being as good as the HTC Vive. The HTC Vive came ready, you know, with in mind that they were gonna set up rooms and have full walking around areas where people are using VR, and the Oculus was kind of more aimed to be a desk system setup where wherever your PC already is, you just add VR to the mix. And you can use a third sensor for about $70 to get a 360 degree experience with the Oculus Rift, but I do think that it, it's kind of a shame that it doesn't include this right out of the box. I do still think that you can buy a third sensor for $70 and adding that to the $400 right now or even $500 after the sale ends, you're still well under the actual price of an HTC Vive, but I do wish it came in the box and that is one area that I probably have the most complaints with the Oculus Rift. Getting a little bit more deep into the software side of things like games and just the Oculus Home software, Oculus Home is okay, it's a decent interface, it's not the best, but it's, it's what you would expect. And on top of that, you can actually plug this into Steam VR, which is probably the much more expansive library of games and experiences, and it works very well in Steam VR too. So you're not really, if you get an Oculus Rift, you can do any, almost any game that the HTC Vive can because most developers are supporting both platforms. While if you have an HTC Vive, you can actually play pretty much any of the Oculus exclusives unless you use um, some third-party software that lets you swap it all in. But there is native Oculus support in Steam, while there isn't native Vive support in Oculus Home. So I've talked a lot about the hardware and specs and whatnot, but the most important thing about virtual reality is the actual software that you get placed in. You know, these digital environments, these games, and that that's just the best part of VR. It's super difficult to convey, especially with my limited studio space, how how cool it and how awesome and how immersive it feels to be using virtual reality but it is fantastic and when you find the right game it is it's mind-blowing how cool the mechanics and gameplay are so i highly recommend walking through all the tutorials all this like beginner setup system vr stuff that'll just kind of get you used to using virtual reality and then valve also released the lab which is a really fantastic showcase of mini games it's kind of like wii sports but for vr and it's fantastic and it really showcases how cool vr can be if you go onto reddit and just look at the virtual reality page there, there are a bunch of suggestions for games and a lot of them are super cool but the one complaint that I do have right now is it's very limited, right? And it's also very difficult to develop for VR. And so this means that not all developers have, you know, started coming over and supporting these platforms. So a lot of the games that we do get do feel a little bit like glorified tech demos. But once again, once you find the game that you really enjoy and that's just like really robustly built, they the gameplay and mechanics feel better than anything I have ever done with any other video game system. These, this gameplay is just a new level of immersive and fast paced and reaction and just interactive and it's so cool and it's so fun and I'm just really excited to see what more comes to the platform. In terms of pricing, this is another hidden money trap of virtual reality. Because there are so few developers producing content, it be prepared to spend more per like hour of gameplay on virtual reality than any other system because a lot of the games right now if they do have a story or a walkthrough system they're anywhere from like one to five hours of pure gameplay content and then most of it's just like open world or just replayability and and you're still spending around 30 to 50 dollars for those triple a titles nevertheless i do think that the games that do exist already completely sell the system there are games like robo recall that i've played and they're so good like they really showcase technology and gaming coming together and just how how amazing virtual reality can be and I'm just really excited for more of this sort of awesome stuff. So I've basically talked about everything that I wanted to in this review and 
my final answer really is that for four hundred dollars the oculus rift is worth it if you're into gaming if you're into computers or just interested in vr in general you've got to try it out it, it's so cool it's com it's just a completely new way of interacting with your computer or just technology that you've never been able to experience before and i think for four hundred dollars this is a great price point for virtual reality the htc vive while not as polished, I think does a better VR tracking system and in general lets it be a better virtual reality system, but that still is $800. If you have the funds for that and just are willing to spend it for that little bit of how much better it is, go for it. But for people who are budget conscious and are willing to either buy a new console or buy virtual reality, I would say you got to try virtual reality. So as a final overview, just to talk about the Oculus Rift, it's a fantastic unboxing hardware experience. The hardware is extremely robust, seems really, really good, doesn't seem like anything's going to break, and everything works as expected. Then the setup was decent, not fantastic, but also not bad. The built-in software that you get with Oculus Home is pretty good, and then there's also third-party support with the HTC Vive and Steam VR. And then finally, the games, while lacking in a lot of departments, are fantastic, incredibly fun, and just really awesome. So I think that the Oculus Rift is absolutely worth it for $400, and you know, when the sale ends at the end of this summer, $500, that, that's a little bit more debatable, but for right now, just $400 is an awesome price. I'll have the Amazon link down below where you can purchase this bundle for this price, and yeah, I'm just really excited about VR, and if you have any questions at all, leave them, let me know in the comments down below. My name is Dylan Hong, this has been Dylan Hong Tech, like and subscribe for some more tech goodness, and thanks for watching.